Compatibilism. Determinism is true and free will exists. Determinism is true and free will exists. I want y'all to think about that. Determinism is true and free will exists. What do y'all think of that? Are any of you going, that's not quite right? Can any of you articulate the problem? The problem would seem, correct, that it's a contradiction. If determinism is true, we saw, then we don't have free will. So how is it that compatibilism can say determinism is true and we have free will? Determinism is true and we have free will. Actions are both caused and free. This is in fact seemingly contradictory. And I've told you, contradictions can never be true. But a lot of smart people have been compatibilists. I mean, a lot of really smart philosophers in history have been compatibilists. And if really smart philosophers can be compatibilists, it seems like there might be something to it. In order for a compatibilist to succeed, there's going to meet, need to be a way to make determinism and free will consistent. The compatibilist is not going to say contradictions can in fact be true. That would be silly. For compatibilism to succeed, we have to make the contradiction disappear. We have to find a way around it. And that's exactly what our compatibilists do. One of our incredibly smart compatibilists in history is a gentleman that we've already seen named John Locke. John Locke gave, told an, a story about kidnapping someone in the middle of the night and locking them in a room. In that room, there is another person that they really want to talk to. So when they wake up, and they see this person in the room that they want to have a conversation with, they don't even check to see if the door is open. They want to be in the room. It so happens they are not free to leave because the door is locked. But nonetheless, they remain in the room because they want to, and also because they can't leave. That is what, what we call a voluntary action. Voluntary actions are actions done in accordance with one's will, but constrained. Okay, you've been kidnapped in the middle of the night, you wake up in a room, and you find yourself in the presence of someone you really, really, really want to have a conversation with. Um, you know, you'll have to come up, you know, think who that might be, come up with your person, you know, uh, Michelle Obama or the Dalai Lama. Please don't say Justin Bieber. Voluntary actions done in accordance with one's will, but they are constrained. You are not free to leave the room because it is locked. Free actions, on the other hand, are done in accordance with your will, but they're not constrained. So if you were in the room talking to this person and the door was unlocked, it would be a free action. Locke says that just because you want to do it doesn't mean it's free. If you are constrained, it is not free. Constraint takes away freedom. Does that make sense? 